Blackfoot ranked second in the state according to both coaches and the media in the latest polls, trying to keep their undefeated streak alive today against Shelly. Starting off, the Russets are down a touchdown, but Shelly with a huge push at the goal line. They're fighting and fighting and fighting, and it pays off. They're in for six, but the PAT is unsuccessful, so they trail by one. This pass complete way downfield to Deegan Hale for the Broncos. Now at the goal line, tossed up to Javante King. It's the play of the night right there. One-handed grab for the stud to extend the lead. But that's not going to shake Shelly. Riker Klinger takes the toss for a huge gain to the left side. The Shelly drive rolls on at the goal line, and Klinger punches it in for six. The rest is going to go for two. Nate Nelson rolls to his left. The jump ball is corralled by C.J. Fielding. And Shelly hands the Broncos their first loss of the season, 35-28 to the final. Century taking on Minico under the lights tonight. Spartan showing what they're capable of. Javith Bendeli takes the carry and cuts across. Got a blocker up ahead. He's got a big gain here, but eventually he'll be forced out of bounds within the 10-yard line, setting up the Spartans in good position. They're leading by a few scores. A couple plays later in the fourth quarter, Bendeli finishes what he started, punches it across for another Spartans touchdown. The Century offense coming to life. Deegan Crabtree looking to throw. He connects with Richie Bull for a solid gain, but it's too little, too late for the Diamondbacks and they fall to the Spartans. Now how about a quad box for some 3A scores? American Falls drops a close one to Reary. South Fremont stays hot with a 34-14 win over Jackson Hole. Teton lays the smack down on Salmon and Marsh Valley wins a barn burner over Kimberly. 55-40 the final from Aramo. Aberdeen coming off a tough loss a week ago, but still ranked top five in the state in 2A, looking to get back in the winning column today against Soda Springs. We started off with a bang as the kickoff went to Junior Hyatt Beck, finds a hole right up the middle, and he takes it. He goes all the way into the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. You're still getting in your seats as the, si as the Tigers take the 7 to nothing lead. And so to Springs responding, though, Trey Stevens looking to even the score, finds Quinton Hansen in the end zone here for their own touchdown, tying this one back up, still early. Aberdeen is driving, looking to retake the lead, and they do just that. QB Gage Driscoll in the shotgun here, takes the snap, keeps it himself to the right side, and leaps into the end zone. But Soda Springs isn't going to go down easy. Carson Hobbs in coverage here. He snags the interception, and the Tigers hold on to win this one. They're back in the winning column. The Rockland Bulldogs sitting at a 1-2 and two record down in 1A Division II, hosting number two Castleford this afternoon. There's receiver Teague Matthews leading Rockland into battle today, but it's the Wolves who get on the board first. Gabe Mahana punches it in from the one-yard line, makes it 6 nothing Castleford. Now Rockland has them pinned deep. Eli Hendrickson applies the pressure. The Bulldogs get the sack just outside of the goal line and force the punt. Now some play action for Rockland. Gavin Perman rolling to his left, hits Matthews in the flat, makes a move on the defender to clear the runway to the end zone. Matthews, a stud, evens the game at six in the first quarter. The Bulldogs defense showing up to play as the Wolves look to air it out deep downfield. Brigham Perman gets a hand in there and rips the ball away. But Castleford stays undefeated. They win it 26 to 14. Also in 1A, Grace wins again, beating Water Springs 58-8, and North Gem gets back to 500, a loud victory over Clark County. That'll do for sports. Back to you, Kylie. All right, thank you very much, Joey.